Hi, good evening guys. Avinash here from the armchair. I hope everyone is fine. You know, they had their tea and so on. It's been a long day for me. A long day for most of the football reporters in the country. Because today, um, I would not say a monumental day, but a day that could signal a brighter future in Asian football. Why? Because the Super League is going to be revamped and we are going to see 18 teams in the 2023 season which to me is very important because we are following the standards set by FIFA which they say that you know a professional player or a league sorry a league should have at least 36 to 28 games so right now we got we all the teams in the league next season they're going to have 34 games which is very good in terms of development of players you know identifying the depth and also uh, the potential that these players can truly showcase for the national team one day and uh, mfl in today's briefing they clearly stated that a revamp is in order to meet with the modern football demands because at the end of the day we can't have a league where uh, teams only play 22 games and then they have the Malaysia Cup and FA Cup. Only if the team is able to go up to the final, that's when they reach the 30-game threshold. So that has to change. Lah. So I think having a 34-league season is a welcome thing in Malaysian football. And uh, I'm happy. I'm happy that this is happening. So, because when you have an increased number of games, there will be more eyeballs, there will be more exposure, there will be more people coming and saying, look, you know, you have lots of games going on, can I be part of it? Commercial value will increase. So, we are moving to that path, which to me, it is very, very good, very important. Okay, now, a lot of people have given their take, some of them were cynical, some of them, you know, were you know, appreciative of what's being done. But let me get to the cynical part of it, love, because a lot of people have uh, actually had their grouse over the number of foreign players that's going to be allowed next season. So here's the deal. Here's the deal. Each teams are allowed to have nine foreigners. Okay. But during game day, only six of them are allowed to be selected. So out of the six, five of them will be on the field, just like how we, how things are being done right now and one will be on the bench and the player on in the bench will replace another foreigner so at the end of the day there will be six local players in uh, in the field of play that's for the super league next season and many say you know why do you need nine teams everything will now do that actually why mfl is doing this because uh, they want to ensure that clubs are moving towards the professional path meaning to say that they want to shun that fa mentality that fa mindset which is very very important so when you have this structure obviously many would be pressured to get nine players but now let's see it in this way this is my uh, opinion on what clubs should do if you can't afford it don't do it simple if you can't afford it don't do it if you can get five players just stick to that maintain that just because another team is getting nine that doesn't mean you should do it look at your finances first look at your budget first plan smartly if you have to use four foreigners do it if you have to use three do it if you want to use nine it's up to you but look at your finances first number one okay in this case many say it would benefit jdt you have to understand that jdt has they have the resources so that's why they are able to do it but if your club is unable to do so it's okay. It's time for you to look within your resources. So to say that you should look at developing your facilities, you know, getting youngsters up. If you can't afford to get nine for it's okay, stick to five. That's it. If PG City can do it with only locals, why can other clubs do so? That's my thing. So right now, clubs have to take the initiative to look at themselves, to self-reflect on whether they can cope with this mechanism or not. MFL has just said, look, you can have nine foreign players, but that does not mean they insist that you must have nine foreign players. No. Clubs themselves have to think for themselves. That is very important. Okay, that is for the Super League. And we have the Reserve League, which I am very happy because it's a league 
that is focused on the under 20, 23 players. It is similar to what's happening in European countries and also in uh, other Asian countries like Japan, Saudi Arabia, Thailand and so on. So when you have the reserve league, this allows allows youngsters to have ample amount of game time. Okay, ah, now one would say that why must they have two foreigners? Why must they have three overage players? Simple. You see, in football development, when you have these people, these kind of players around youngsters, they don't act as players who are going to, you know, say, look, I am the star here. No, they are there to help the under-23 players. The under-23 players will learn from these players. I see it in that manner. I don't see it negatively. So, and you have to understand that, you know, in each game, there, there will be at least eight local under-23 players. So, their development will not be affected. Instead, they will learn from the overage players, which I believe is about three, and foreigners maximum two. You know, so this is a process where a player gets game time, but also a lesson from these experienced players. So I think it's a good move to have the reserve league, uh, which to me, in a way, essentially uh, placates the absence of the Premier League. Okay, uh, Premier League is temporarily suspended. It is not abolished, but temporarily suspended. Why? Okay, I had this thought in mind. You know, why can't you allow the M3, M4, M clubs to vie for a, you know, place in the Premier League? MFL right now wants to assess these amateur clubs. Simple as that. They want to make sure that when these clubs transition from amateur to professional, in this case, if they go to Premier League semi-pro, it is done in a very good manner. Meaning to say that the club licensing part, in Malaysia, we have, I think, 21 criteria that we have to go through. These clubs are able to adhere to it. Maybe I think it would be lesser if it's a semi-pro. So for me, it's a good move that, you know, uh, the reserve league is coming back. And I hope the Premier League will come back soon. That is very, very important. You still have the President Cup, Belia Cup. President Cup is under 21. Belia is under 19. And then we also have the Liga Cape, Commentary uh, and in Malaysia, where you have under 17 players. So, structure is already there. Uh, I I would like to quote what Stuart said. He said, this is not just a Super League gram. This is, this is a structural gram. Okay? Right now, I don't care whether this team is going to be... One team is going to benefit better compared to the other team. No, no, that's that's not my concern right now. My concern right now is each team getting number of games and learning how to adapt to this uh, process of having more games, having having a better understanding of commercial value. And I hope MFL would actually get the best out of it in terms of broadcasting rights because at the end of the day, broadcast money helps clubs. Okay, and clubs also need to be prudent with what they do. They need to be smart with their finances. That is very, very important. Enough of saying that this club has nine. I mean, this club has star players. We need star players. Sometimes you have to, you know, self-reflect and think. You know, ways of doing things differently. Sometimes you don't need to. JDT has. We have to understand that they are on another level right now in terms of finance, in terms of resources. Amazing, amazing. So clubs right now should look at themselves and see what can I do to close the gap with them. Don't immediately say, look, I need finances right now to make the team better. No, plan thoughtfully. That is very, very important. If that is not done, it's going to be hey by year. You know, so I, for one, believe that, you know, this revamp is a good thing. And, uh, you know, I hope that clubs in... M3, M4, M5 would take up this challenge and improve themselves uh, in terms of management and also, you know, having good facilities and so on. I, I can see several clubs doing it very well, like Real Chukai, uh, Kerte, and I also know Harini is, is training in Punchala and so on. A lot of things can be done. There is potential. So, for sure, Malaysian Football League would be assessing these clubs, will be looking at these clubs. So, yeah, I mean, it's See, I understand that change can be a tough thing, okay? Uh, I follow the F1. You know, when they said Halo is going to be introduced, a lot of people hated that idea. They said cars would, be, would look ugly, players, I mean, sorry, uh, drivers, view side is going to be affected, but that bloody thing has saved lots of lives. I'm not saying this change is like a Halo, but let's give it a chance. 
let's see what happens. But I am optimistic that this move is going to benefit Malaysian football because one, we're going to see players getting lots of game time. Two, our national team coaches will be able to have better assessment of players instead of you know seeing 15, 20 games. Now they have 30 games to assess. Isn't that a good thing? So yeah, I mean, as for the foreigners, like I said, clubs have to decide whether they want nine or not. See their budget, see their finances, be realistic. It is very important. That is what MFL also said. MFL said, look, this is the guideline. It is up to you how you want to do it. Okay, and that's what PGST is doing. They believe that you know going all local is going to help things. So that's that's clubs have to see <clears throat> in that angle. So yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to 2023. I mean, 2022 is still ongoing. Please do not ignore the Super League games right now. It's quite entertaining. So follow the season for Berlin this time around, and uh, yeah, continue supporting Malaysian football. And I hope this. Uh, new revamp would actually bring in more eyes will get more fans you know at the end of the day my job is to ensure that you know people still continue to follow malaysian football so yeah uh just you know see it in a positive manner let's not see this in a negative stigma you know things might change things this change maybe could herald a new future you know i'm seeing it in that manner and uh, oh yes also i did ask about uh, financial control and Stuart did tell me that uh, La Liga's ECP, which is called the Economic Control Program, could be studied from 2024 onwards, which is very important because at the end of the day, you want clubs, yes, commercial values over nine, ticket, <coughs> ticket sales, so surely you like because you have lots of games and all that, but, but the balance between expenditure and revenue, that is something that is very important in terms of, you know, growth of a club and also in a way to create a level playing field. So, I w he said 2024 onwards that we studied and I hope it would be implemented. I did ask that aspect because at the end of the day, you know, financial responsibility is, is something that is always discussed in Malaysia. Something that, you know, some of us frown upon it because they're like, why should we talk about it? The season is already give, give budget and all that. Simple. When you give a budget, there must be a financial planning. If that is not there, things are not going to work. So, yeah. I mean, uh, that's one update I would like to share. So, yeah. Keep supporting Malaysian football. I know this is a long ass video. Please, be, I mean, those who watched it till the end, thank you so much. And yeah, keep supporting Malaysian football, guys.